everybody, let's get started. I'm Katie Rice from the Rice team at Guild Mortgage. We are based out of Truckee, California. Guild is a large company. They're all over the nation. We do loans throughout the nation. So if you need a referral somewhere, please let us know. We kind of specialize in California and Nevada. So anywhere in California and Nevada, we'd love to be your trusted lender. Uh, we really believe in education and really taking care of the client. And with the new competitive environment, we believe in guaranteeing our loans. So all of that's super important. And two people on my team are here. One is Chelsea Combs, who will be introducing Lloyda. She is the uh, team production manager, and she also originates loans. And she will be introducing Lloyda. Say hi, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and then Chloe Yates, who helped us put this presentation together and is helping. Uh, we have another marketing girl, Shelby, who is out right now, but Chloe has just been the key, key component to this presentation today. So thank you, Chloe. And I'm going to turn this over to Chelsea, and she's going to introduce our wonderful speaker. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Um, I'm really excited to hear Lloyda talk. Uh, Lloyda Velasquez, she is a realtor in California and Nevada. She has over 80,000 YouTube subscribers, over 20,000 Instagram followers. I've already checked out the guide that she has for us today. And I think I'm most excited because out of all the speakers that we've ever had, this guide is so practical and it really gives you the tips and tricks to actually implement this, which I think is a little different than some people we've had in the past where they're teaching us about it, but not really how to actually get in there and do the work. So um, Lloyda, thank you for joining us and uh, take it from here. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me. I am really excited to be doing this presentation just because you know, if you would have told me six years ago that I would be teaching other agents of my experience with social media and real estate, I would have said, you're crazy. Like public speaking, and that's not for me. So the fact that I am where I am now is just really exciting for me. And Chelsea, just like you mentioned, you know, the guide that I created, anything that I put out, whether it's my YouTube videos or guides or workbooks, whatever it is, I want to be as detailed as possible because I feel that there is so much vague information out there. It's almost like a lot of agents don't want to tell you everything because they, they have like a scarcity mindset. So you guys all um, received it in an email. You guys all have it. If you want, you can open it as I am speaking this morning. You guys can have it next to you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So everything that I put in that guide is based off of my experience and what has worked for me. And I try to make everything simple. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I don't want you to think that you need expensive equipment or lighting or camera. These are things that you can start creating just with your cell phone. So a little bit about me, I have been in the business for a little bit over six years. Prior to getting into real estate, I used to work in marketing and advertising. I absolutely loved what I did. I was traveling 100% of the time. I was pretty much living out of a, a suitcase from hotel to hotel. Um, a lot of the companies that I represented were in the automotive industry. So I was at auto shows and ride and drives and things like that. And I loved it because I was traveling. Everything was paid for. I didn't have kids, not married. So I'm like, I'm living the dream. But then it got to the point that, you know, I didn't want to live that life forever. So I thought to myself, you know what, let me get an office job because that's the right thing to do. So I remember I was in the Chicago Auto Show and it was negative 30 degrees when I was working there. And I was like, OK, I think this is the point where I need to start looking into something else. So I remember um, I had been putting out my resume on LinkedIn and a recruiter reached out to me for this corporate company in downtown LA. At that time, I lived in California and I lived four miles from this company. So I interviewed, I got the job and I quickly realized that the, cuti uh, the cubicle life was not for me. Um, I was working in very negative environments. The people around me were not friendly. Um, I was getting paid well, but I absolutely hated what I was doing. So then that's kind of when I started to look into real estate. I knew that it was not going to be easy. Um, I had friends. I knew people that were in the business. And I started asking questions like, hey, what is it like to be a real estate agent? And they would tell me, oh, well, you know, you have to cold call and door knock. 
And when they told me that, I was like, cold calling and door knocking? Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Like, I'm never going to do that. And the funny thing is that once I got into the business, that's what I became very good at. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, if you really want something, you're going to do whatever it takes. So as I was in my transition of getting into real estate from leaving my corporate job, um, one of the things that I thought that I needed to also do before I fully committed to getting to real estate is that I thought that I needed to go back to school and get my master's because maybe that would help me land that executive level job that I wanted. And so I got accepted into graduate school. I was in the process of getting my MBA and I had already started real estate. I was prospecting. And then when I saw the opportunities of what could come about if I really stuck to this business and did it like 100%, like not being scared to make the calls, the thick skin and all that, I told myself, you know what, I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to put aside my MBA and I'm going to pursue real estate full time. So I had already paid for like two semesters at that time. I didn't want to get any student loans. So I was paying out of pocket and then I just decided to drop out. And that was it. I talked to my parents and initially they were scared because, you know, when you get into real estate, you don't know when your next paycheck is going to come. So the good thing uh, about my family is they were very supportive. So I made that switch and I started going on YouTube to see what it was like to be a real estate agent. And I wasn't finding really any videos. We're talking about like 2014, 2015. I was going on YouTube, co-calling, door knocking, and I would always find like the same two people giving their experience. And then I'm like, okay, where are the women? Like there are no women talking about real estate. And there aren't really that many agents talking about the day-to-day -day activities of prospecting, like what it's like and things like that. So then I saw that as an opportunity for me to kind of start putting myself out there. Now, I have never been the type of individual to be like, oh, you know what, let me pick up my phone and start blogging and I want to become a YouTuber. No, I was like the opposite. Even when I was in college and growing up, I was the last person to go up if there was a group presentation. If the teacher wanted to volunteer, I would be putting my head down to make sure that there was no eye contact because I didn't want to talk. That's so awesome. when I made this decision about doing YouTube videos, I had like a conversation with myself and I told myself, you know what, now you are in an industry where if you don't put yourself out there, like people are not going to know who you are. They're not going to come knocking on your door. They're not going to call you because they don't even know that you're a real estate agent. So the fact that there weren't that many women doing YouTube videos, I said, you know what, I'm going to start pretty much just filming my journey, anything that I'm learning. Because at the same time, I know from people that I knew, family, friends, and relatives, back then, they saw real estate agents, some of them like, oh, well, you know what, back when the market crashed, there's a lot of agents that were shady. Um, a lot of people have had bad experiences with real estate agents. So I kind of wanted to take also me doing video as a way to educate others and let them know like, hey, you know, not all real estate agents are the same. And at the same time, I wanted to showcase my experience and what I was learning so that other agents would know how to be a good agent when they were working with a client. So how to talk to them, uh, questions to ask, how to let them know if they can help them or not. So that's kind of how I started my YouTube channel. Um, initially, it was just with my cell phone. Back then, it was an iPhone 6. For two years, I was filming a video every single week on my cell phone. And the videos that I was putting out was just based on my experience of what I was going through that day. I was cold calling a lot. So just to kind of give you an idea of what my prospecting looked like, my first year, all I did was door knocking, which is crazy considering the fact that I told you when I first was looking into it, I thought that that was embarrassing. Like I have to talk to strangers. So cold, uh, door knocking is what I did my entire first year. And then um, I started to transition to cold calling because I saw that I would be able to talk to more people in an hour versus at the doors. Now, the great thing about door knocking and cold calling, contrary to what you might hear that cold calling and door knocking is dead, is that I feel that by doing that, that gave me the confidence to be able to have very good communication skills, no matter who it was that I'm talking to. 
in this business specifically, you know, we deal with so many different personalities, so many walks of life that you need to be able to relate to that person and then be comfortable in speaking to you to essentially want to do business with you. So for me, the door knocking and the cold calling is what I did. I was very consistent with it. I was trained in the way that it was almost like very military, like from eight to 1130, you're going to prospect from seven to set from seven to eight, it's role playing. And I did that because, okay, Mike Ferry says you need to go after listings. I want to be like a listing agent. So that's what I did. There's no point in reinventing the wheel. So let's do what top producers were doing. Now, at that time, also, not a lot of agents were doing video. So now I kind of, now that you already know a little backstory of how I started, I want to dive in deep when it comes to social media and creating video and how that has helped me. So, yes, go ahead, Katie. I have one thing to say, and I think it's super important people hear it, that you had someone who you looked up to. I think Mike Ferry is great too. And you're kind of the new generation of that. And like you have a podcast, you have a boot camp, you have all these great things. So it's so great to see a woman out there leading this. So thank you for doing that, first of all. And it's just so cool. So yeah, thank you. Yes, I remember, you know, going on YouTube and even reading books. One of my favorite books that I read in the beginning was How to Develop a Six Figure Income by Mike Ferry. And everything that he talked about on there was exactly what I did in the beginning. I mean, there's no like secret magic sauce out there for how to get listings and how to become a millionaire. You just have to put in the work and be disciplined with it. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of agents slack, especially nowadays with the era of social media, they think it's gonna be easy getting leads and things like that. And throughout the, the time that I have been posting consistently, it has gotten to the point that I do get leads and referrals, but it's still not something that I bank on as being my only way to generate business. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So when it comes to video, maybe some of you guys have watched my videos on YouTube. Maybe this is the first time you're coming across who I am. So I made it a point to post consistently. So my strategy was to post one video every single week. Back then, I didn't have a day or a time of when to post. Um, anytime that I was going through a situation, whether it was with the lead or on the phones or just anything that I was learning, I would take that as inspiration to do a video. And I saw that as I was posting these videos, a lot of agents were relating to what I was putting out, again, because there was not a lot of content revolving real estate training and like the day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. um, to this point right now where we're at, I believe I have over 240 videos that I have been posting. And when I started my YouTube channel, again, it was never for the intention of, you know, I wanna blow up and be a YouTuber. Even when sometimes people say that I'm a YouTuber, I don't I don't like that word because I feel that I'm I'm just giving value to agents out there. And it's great that you see me as a, a source, but being a YouTuber was never like an idea for me. It just has happened naturally. Um, I've always been a very genuine person when I want to give back to others. And I think that you can see that through my videos. So as I started to become very consistent in posting these videos, I knew that eventually it would get to a point where video, it would, video was going to be what would make me stand out versus other agents. So one of the things that I started to do as I started to become better at creating content is that any time that I would get leads on the phone, if you remember, all I did was cold calling. I was calling out a lot of expires and for sale by owners. What I started to do is that any time that I had a good conversation with any of them, I immediately make sure to record a short 10 to 15 second clip and text it to them after we were done with our conversation. Wow. I made sure that I had their cell phone, which I just confirmed like, hey, just to make sure blah, 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 323 is your cell phone, right? Okay, great. I'm gonna shoot you a text message with my info so that you have it. So they might think that I'm just sending them a picture of my business card, but I, I did send them that. But aside from that, I was sending them a short video saying, hey, this is Loida, the realtor that just spoke to you a couple seconds ago. Wanted to introduce you through this video message so you can put a face in the name. I'm here to help you. If there's anything you need, um, we'll talk soon. And that video was now making me stand out because if you're calling expires, they're probably getting hundreds of phone calls. 
for sale by owners, the same thing. And you always hear, oh, you're like the 1000th agent. You all sound the same. So I'm like, okay, I, I need to differentiate myself. So what do I need to start doing? So once I started doing that, I saw that I was getting a good response. These expireds, these homeowners were saying thank you or, oh, wow, thanks for sending that video. That's really cool. So then I'm like, okay, I need to continue doing this. Um, most recently, I had an expired that I called. And initially, he said, you know what, Loida, I do want to sell, but give me two months. I'm going to hold off a little bit. Now, I'm the type of person that I'm not pushy, but at the same time, if I hear there's motivation, and obviously, you know, the way that the market is, I want to see if I can set an appointment with the, with the homeowner to see if I can help them sell the property. So with this gentleman, I kept on pushing and finding out why he wanted to hold off two months. Long story short, he said, you know what, I'm just going to hold off, but you're welcome to keep in touch with me. As soon as we hung up, I sent him that video message. He texts me back. Hey, Loida, that was really awesome. You know what? I'm going to be out of town, but let's talk in two weeks. I love it. You better believe that in two weeks I was calling him and I ended up having a listing presentation over the phone, sent him everything through DocuSign. And those two months ended up turning into two and a half weeks. He signed everything. I got that listing. <laughs> and I know that that video is what made me stand out because now it was no longer a voice that he was hearing. Now he could see what I looked like, that I was a real person. The way that I carried myself and presented myself in that video was like, okay, this girl, she means business. So I think that she could probably get the job done. So that's just one that. example. I love that. Yeah. That's so that, that somebody said in the chat, they said that's gold right there. And it is. Yes. Yes. You guys have to do it. Um, it's easy when let's say I have an iPhone. I'm pretty sure maybe 90% of the people here have an, uh, an iPhone, but there's still those that have Androids. It's a little tricky when you have an iPhone and that other person that you're trying to send a message has an Android because then the quality of the video doesn't come out good. So a trick and what I do in situations like that is that I'll still record that 15 second clip on my cell phone and then I'll upload it to my YouTube channel, but I leave it as an unlisted link. And because it is a short clip, it's going to be uploaded as a short YouTube short. And um, then I just send a text message to that person with a link to that video. Wow. And I title it, Loida checking in or nice talking to you, whatever it is that you want. Now, the cool thing about doing it that way is that you can see when they open it, because if you go to your analytics on YouTube, you can see how many views it has gotten. I love it. So when I started doing that, even recently, I, will, I sent a video like that to one of my leads and he ended up watching that video like five times. So if you start wow. creating content, maybe in this case, I'm telling you this tip of, of doing that short video to send to someone, but, but let's say that you already have some videos that you have uploaded onto YouTube that are educational for consumers, buyers, or sellers. What ends up happening is that these leads get curious as to what else you have on your YouTube channel. And now they start browsing around. And when they see that you are consistent and that you're putting out video content, Next thing you know, this lead that I just told you about is leaving me comments on my YouTube videos that are not even related to, to buying or selling. It's just like training videos. Yeah. So that's the cool thing about that. So that's a tip for you guys. If it's an Android user, you can see because it's usually green, go that route. If it's an iPhone, just send it to them. So that's one of the, the tips that has definitely helped me a lot when standing out, doing that short clip. And again, it's very simple, 10, 50 seconds. You guys can do it. Um, if you get leads or whenever you do end up doing it, set aside a time during the day when you send out these video messages, because at the same time, we want to make sure that we are staying consistent and productive during the time that we have set aside for prospecting. So let's say that you have told yourself, I'm going to call from nine to 12, maybe at 12, 10, you go through the list of all the people that you got and you start sending them that video message, but you don't want to let a day pass by because then now they forget about you. You want to hit them on the spot. The same thing. If you meet someone in person that same day, later on, send them a video message. And then you are be like, oh, this is so cool. Like nobody does this. And again, we want to stand out because there's so many agents. I think there's more agents in, in California and in Florida than like in every, any other state. So what we do to stand out is little things like this. Um, I'm going to go to 
through the chat to see if there's any questions in the meantime. I think the biggest question was how long is your average video that you post to your YouTube channel? Uh, on average, it's between like five to seven minutes. That's what I what I have seen as the sweet spot. Yeah. So usually when you post a YouTube video, no matter how long it is, depending on the on the type of value that you're giving, people watch half. So that's just kind of how it is. So the longer the video is, people will probably watch like three minutes of it or four minutes. Um, the videos that do really well in terms of um, how long someone stays watching that video are list. So top five reasons why you need to move to Lake Tahoe, California. Five things to do here, like those, when you give the top or the five, one, two, three, whatever it is, those do really well. Um, other type of videos that I started to incorporate on my YouTube channel, aside from the real estate training ones for agents, is property tours. So again, what I started to do is that I thought to myself, you know, I want to stand out so that when I'm meeting with a seller and they ask me, oh, well, what are you going to do to market my home? I want to show them, you know what, I'm going to market your home, do a property tour video. We're going to showcase it and do all of this. So what I started doing is that I started going to the route of like new construction, luxury buildings and things like that. So there is a website called buzzbuzzhome.com. And that website tells you all of the new construction that's going on. It tells you who the builder is, um, their Instagram, like all of the information. So what I started to do is that I got a videographer. I started reaching out to these new construction places that were close to where I lived or that I wanted to target. And I would DM them on Instagram. I would send them an email and I would say, hey, my name is Loida. I'm a realtor out here, EXP Realty. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I would love to showcase that new development that, you're, that you are putting together. Let me know if this is something you're open to. Mm -hmm. Now, they would reply to me and they would say, uh, you know what? It's not going to be done yet. Or yeah, sure. You know what? Let me connect you with my marketing person. And then now I'm getting in front uh, these people, these developers that have money. And at the same time, I'm creating content so that when a seller, when I'm sending a seller something regarding myself and my team, it's like, Hey, look, I am showcasing these bigger developments. So if I could do that for them, I'll definitely do that for you. So that's another way to stand out. And that is something that I, I don't think a lot of agents know about or even think to do. Yeah. Instagram has been a great one for me. Yeah. Um, I got, I, last year I did one with a luxury apartment building. So it's not like no one's going to buy or sell there, but it's a luxury place in downtown LA that everyone knows about because they're always having parties. So I DM them on Instagram. And even I was surprised. I mean, you always want to expect yes, but even I was surprised when they DM me back and they were like, yes, oh my God, we will love to do that. And I'm like, these people are really nice and they're friendly. And if you are going to give them some value, that's not going to cost them anything. All you're doing is free marketing for them. And now you can use that content for yourself and to show others when it comes to um, the things that you can do. I know one of the questions, and I think you answered this. Do you do, you do these short follow-up clips in a certain area? And you said you put them in an unli unlisted link in YouTube. Is that correct? Yes. Unlisted. Okay. So and they, they were asking specifically where you film the videos. When oh, you okay. do like those, the quick clips, do you do it in your car? Do you do it in your office? Oh, or thanks. thanks wherever John. I am. <laughs> wherever you are. There's no like studio or anything. Like if I'll just make sure that there's no like, um, I don't know, people walking behind me. Maybe it's in a corner. Maybe it's in my car. I'll do it in my car. And now they see that I'm, I'm on the road working. Hey, if you hire me, you know, we're going to get the job done because I'm always on the road. I'm never at the office. So um, it doesn't matter. And I think for me, and many women can relate, sometimes we feel like, oh, you know what, my hair's not done and my makeup and maybe my shirt and like my earrings. It got to the point that for me, I didn't want to have that be something that stopped me. So a tip for you guys, no matter what you're doing or where you're going, just make sure that you're always dressed up, have your hair, <laughs> and your makeup done, because now we don't have to worry about that. 
Because yeah. sometimes what would happen was that maybe that morning I didn't really put on makeup on and then I got a really hot lead and I'm like, man, like I can't shoot a video right now. Like at, at least for me personally, I want to make sure that I present my way and myself in a way that, you know, they're going to remember me, not just be like, who is this girl? She kind of looks like, like a bum, like is she even a real estate agent? <laughs> so that would just be a tip for me that, that you guys can take, but yeah, no matter where you're at, just go ahead pick up the phone and, and just do it there. I love that. <laughs> Any other questions that you guys see that you want me to address? No, I, there's no, I don't see any other on there. Uh, Carrie, Carrie mentioned, Hey, now that's me. That that's her. <laughs> she's always out and about. She does some great, she does some great Instagram. She, she's not giving herself credit. She's out skiing. She's out doing different things. So she does a great job, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, also in the guide that you guys have, I there's a page on there that shows you the type of equipment and the things that I have used, um, editing software. When I first started doing these videos on YouTube, I would use iMovie because I have a Mac. iMovie is completely free. Nowadays, there are so many more like programs and apps that you can just edit directly from your phone. So one of the ones that I use very frequently if I'm doing something on my phone is InShot, which, which is completely free. And InShot, you can edit videos horizontal, vertical. So for Instagram, for um, YouTube, whatever it is, you can add transitions, text. So it just makes everything so much easy. So that is InShot. But again, there's so many out there. Okay, great tip. Yeah, that, 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 information is so golden too. Thank you for sharing all that information with us. Yeah, you're welcome. And there's also a list of uh, video ideas that I included on there. Because again, sometimes, you know, we want to create videos, but we're like, well, what am I going to film about? Like, what should I do? What's interesting? Or maybe you might think, oh, but Lloyd already did all those videos. Like, why should I do it too? So if you are thinking that, maybe you're thinking that there's already agents that are doing what you want to do, still do it. Because at the end of the day, someone is going to relate to you and they're not going to relate to me. So you never know who you're going to target. There's an audience for every single one of you out there. If you speak another language, let's say for me, I speak Spanish. If you speak maybe Mandarin or whatever it is, create content in that language. Because the moment that someone can relate to you because of that other language that you guys speak, now you have, they, they pretty much trust you. They're going to reach out to you. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't know that Katie spoke Portuguese. I'm going to reach out to her. <laughs> that would be great. I think we lost your, or I, I lost your voice. Did you? Anyone else or is it just me? Okay. How about now? There, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got too excited. <laughs> I love it. We do have another couple questions. Hi, Loda. This is from Kimberly Torres. Can we expect your boot camp soon? And I know you have a boot camp coming. Yes. Yes. I will be doing a boot camp. It will be starting on April 14th. So all of the details will be going up on my website in the next couple of days, but April 14th is the next boot camp. And we'll send you all information too, um, if you registered here. So, and then Jennifer asks, when do you, when you do property tours, do you walk through the homes? What is your style? Do people like to see the views finishes? So when I have done, I've done property tours in two different ways. When I do it for a YouTube video, um, I walk through the entire place. Um, if it's possible and if I'm able to, I like to actually give the tour and I say, hey, we're here at 388 Olive Street in Pasadena. This is a new construction. So you kind of give the details in the beginning. And then after that, if you don't want to continue talking, it's just now filming the rooms, the views, whatever it is, and then adding text so that people know exactly you know, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, square feet there is. Now, something that I have seen that does very well when it comes to Instagram, because now I kind of want to talk about Instagram, is that property tours do really well when it comes to Instagram, specifically the reels. If you guys go on Instagram or even TikTok and you type in the hashtag real estate, the top reels are always property tours. And what you'll notice is that like the agent doesn't really come out. It's just the tour of the property. And it's almost like they speed it up. 
So it's like you get the entire tour in 15 to 30 seconds. <laughs> I think nowadays we all kind of expect things to go fast. So if something's way too slow, you kind of tune out and you move on. But when you do something like an Instagram reel, make sure that you speed up the speed to like, I don't know, so that everything happens in 30 seconds and those videos do really well. Wow, um, other videos that do well on Instagram reels are like the transformation videos. So I posted a video a couple months ago of a property that I listed. It was very outdated. It had pink walls. It had a wallpaper. We got a contractor out there. They did everything white and I did a before and after. So I took little clips and I put it together and people love to see that. People love to see the transformations. Yeah. So those do very well. Um, when it comes also to Instagram, I have taken the more, uh, the approach of providing value with like a sense of humor because a lot of the videos that I do on YouTube, it's me just giving educational value that sometimes I feel that maybe don't people don't see my personality. And I like to think that I'm funny. So I went on Instagram and I kind of see what's trending in terms of the audio and how I can relate it to real estate. So one of my top reels has over 45,000 plays. It got shared over 200 times and it got saved over 100 times. Now it's me being silly but there's a bigger purpose for me doing this because at the end of the day, I'm trying to think, how can I get in front of more real estate agents or people in my field? I created something funny. Other agents can totally relate to it. So now they are sharing it on their feed. So now I'm being exposed to tens of thousands of other people that have no idea who I am. Then uh, they go back to my Instagram page. They see that I'm consistent on there. And then that's when they start following so my YouTube following of 80, over 80,000 subscribers and on Instagram over 25 or whatever, it has all been organic. I have never paid a marketing company. I have never paid for likes or follows or anything like that. When I do my YouTube videos, and this is something you guys have to make sure that you're doing, is make sure that you are putting your Instagram on there so that people know where to find you. Because mm -hmm. people, whether it's agents, whether it's consumers, they get curious. If they see a video that they like, they're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to do my research. And they become like private detectives. And next thing you know, they're like, they know all about you. That's the same thing when it comes to sellers at a listing appointment or a buyer. So if you're able to direct people from your YouTube channel to your Instagram, then that's how you start to build those organically. And the key again is to be consistent. Now, I don't want you to focus on, you know, well, I'm putting stuff out, but I'm not getting any likes or I'm not getting any followers because that's going to come with time. What you want to do is build almost like a library of content so that you have that to be able to show to a prospect so that they see that, you know, you're active using video and you're not afraid of getting in front of a camera. Let's see, what other questions? You guys can keep them coming. I actually, I had a question for you, Lita. So yes. what, when, once you started the consistency, what do you attribute to like the, what made you pop? What made you explode? Like on YouTube, you have so many followers. How did that happen? How long were you going posting into the abyss before people started noticing you? So the videos that I started creating that I saw that were getting a lot of attention and were also ones that I just was like, you know, I'm going to do this because people need to know this. The first one was how to pass your real estate exam. So the type of content that I was putting out was was stuff that people are always searching. So I started doing that. I put out my very first for sale by owner cold call video. And back then, again, if you went on YouTube, there were no women that had put out any videos cold calling. It was always men. So for me, it was posting that type of content and being consistent with it that, it that people saw, okay, this girl, I don't know who she is, but she's posting these videos and like, oh my gosh, she's horrible at that. for so by her cold call, but I want to keep watching. So then I just continued to create that information. I was giving tips for agents based on what I was learning. And I want to say within like the first year, I got maybe around 5,000 subscribers. And then the next year it went close to 10,000. And then after that, it just... It, it, it's now to the point that every month I get like around 800 to 1200 new subscribers every single month. 
but I would have to say it was just the type of videos that I was creating that I know no matter whether it was 2015 or 2022, the information was still relevant. So they still get a lot of views. My top one, I think right now has like 170,000 something views and it's how to pass your real estate license exam because people are always taking their, their test. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. Um, any other questions? So far, any questions, but some Francesca, I hope I didn't say that wrong. I commented she had done just what you had said and she kind of, it really went viral for her. If I said that, I don't think it did viral, but she she said it did really well for her. So (laughs) that's awesome. Using your results. Yeah, it did. So amazing. Honestly, I've been doing it for a while and I just got a new iPhone and I did that whole speed trick. (laughs) <laughs> like when the entrance part and then doing it just a little bit slower but so quick I did and it just went crazy well I was like oh my gosh I'm posting the same thing tomorrow so I'm excited so that's a fact it works <laughs> that's awesome and you know with me posting on YouTube and on Instagram I do get business So I want to touch on a little bit about that because maybe you're thinking, well, what's the point of doing videos, right? So for my YouTube channel, because a lot of the content that I post is for agents, it it has gotten to the point that I have a lot of agents that reach out to me for referrals, whether they have a client that's looking to buy or sell. So as you're doing videos, make sure that you're mentioning where you are located. That way, anyone that's watching you, anytime that they have a lead that's looking to move to where you are, you'll be the first person that pops up. Mm -hmm. Aside from agents that have sent me referrals, I have also gotten clients from just them randomly jumping on my YouTube channel and being um, kind of browsing through my buyer and seller content Mm -hmm. and reaching out to me. The most recent one happened late last year. I got an email from a gentleman. He said, hey, Loida, I've been watching your YouTube videos and they're really awesome. You're like the expert. I have a property out here in LA that I'm looking to sell and I wanted to see if you could help me out. So I emailed him. We ended up getting on a call. Long story short, it was a $1.6 million property. I was not competing with anybody else. And I got that listing and he was out of state. So he trusted that I, you know, Loida is the go-to agent out there. We got the job done and he was super happy and excited about that. So that was just a lead that came from social media. So yeah. imagine if you're posting and it's not like you have to have like tens of thousands of subscribers. If you're posting good, good content that people can relate to or people see you as the expert, even if you only have like 500 subscribers or 20 subscribers, if you're consistent, they're going to reach out to you because they know that you're the expert and you're probably the only person that they're going to come across um, when they're searching for an agent. I think, uh, I'm not sure where I read it, but um, I believe that a lot of people, when they're searching for an agent, they just kind of go on Google and see what pops up. I know that some people have told me that that's how they have found their agents in the past. So the good thing about doing videos and posting them on YouTube is that Google is the parent company of YouTube. So if you are doing videos and you title it correctly, you title it in a way that, you know, people are searching for that title, Google is going to feature your videos in the video section and they shoot videos over anything else. So that's a reason why I get a lot of views. I was looking at my statistics and most of the traffic that I get to my YouTube channel, over 54% comes from Google search. So people go to Google and then I pop up. If you go and search tips for new agents, you're probably going to see my videos on there. And then that's how I started to come up and start to get more views. And then that's how, you know, I get subscribers and it has gone to, to where it is now. There is a question. Do you prefer to create your videos on apps over TikTok? Uh, the videos. Yeah. So I have a TikTok, but the only, well, the main platforms that I'm consistent on are YouTube and Instagram. I am going to try to be more consistent also in posting on TikTok, but you know, it gets to the point that now you have so many different platforms and you're like, okay, my time, how am I going to distribute it? Right. So the, I'll tell you this, the videos that I post on my Instagram, my reels, I usually edit them depending on how much editing is involved in terms of like clips or transitions. I'll do it within the app, but if not, I'll use InShot. 
to do it. If I want to speed up certain sections or slow down certain sections, just because Instagram doesn't have that feature. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started posting reels on Instagram, I was doing my own video, well, my own audio on it. Now there's a cool thing. I think it's an update from like the past couple of months. I don't even know how long it's been where Instagram will tell you what sounds are trending. So if you see a little arrow that's going up next to a sound, it means that that sound is trending. So if you create a video and you use that sound, um, the likelihood of your video to come up in the Explorer page on Instagram is higher than if you just use a, a regular sound that maybe no one is currently hearing. So my most recent reels, if you guys go and watch them on my Instagram, I have used the sounds that were trending at that time when I posted them. Let's see. Seth asked many times when I do video tours of my listing with my buyers in mind. I'm brutally honest about the condition of the property. I'm curious, would you take a shinier version of the property tour to post on social? Um, Seth, you know, I think it's great to show variety so that people see that, you know, it's not all like sunshine and rainbows out there when it comes to properties, but you can see the differences. So I think that's fine what you're showcasing there. Um, it's really up to you. I don't think that there's going to be a difference in terms of views, but just like I mentioned, people love to see transformations. Uh, maybe at the same time, uh, something that I've seen a lot of agents doing recently is what does $500,000 get you in Los Angeles? And they showcase different cities to show, you know, in LA, you get a one bedroom, 500 square foot home. When you go out to like two hours away, you get like a four, a five bedroom type of thing. So those are just some things that you can do. Athena's had said, I think, relating to reels, the business Instagram, I'm assuming, limits the music that you can use. Is that? Uh, yes. So the trick is to have it as a creator uh, account. Because the business, I do believe, it has very limited options when it comes to the audio. So when you go on the settings, just make sure that you put it, that you are a creator. And then that's when you're going to open up all of the, the features that you have. Good. That's a good tip. Yeah, good tip. And then also another tip when you are posting reels is that you can create the video. Um, when you are posting it, it gives you the option to select a cover picture. So usually what I like to do is that before I film the video or even during the video, I'll pick a part and then I'll, I'll pretend like I'm going to post it on my stories. And then on there is when, where I'll add the text. And then I download that picture. That way, when I upload the picture to the cover of the reel, it's the same thing. Now, what I see other people do is that they'll go on Canva and they just create like a cover picture there and then just upload it there. So those are two different ways that you can do it. That way, when you are posting a reel, um, it's not just like maybe the side of your face and people don't really know what's going on. Um, it's something that's more thought out and relevant to like your video. Do you use a selfie pole or a tripod? Jennifer wants to know. Yes, I do. So I use one of these. You guys probably have it. They're like, I don't know, 15 bucks. These, these are great for the cell phone if I am... Yeah, for a YouTube video, if you are wherever you are, just make sure that you're standing in front of good lighting. Um, if you want to purchase lighting in the guide, I gave you some examples of like ring lights that you can use and things like that. So you don't have to go all out with equipment. I think it was two years after I started to create videos. That's when I made that investment of purchasing an actual vlogging camera. Um, because now it was being consistent. So the video, the camera that I got was the Canon G7X and it was about like $600 or so. But, you know, nowadays with your iPhone, it's like 1080 and even 4K that I don't really think you even need uh, an expensive camera. Do you have separate accounts for your real estate business or do you, uh, do your personal account have everything? My personal account has everything. Um, the way that I see it is that it's better for someone that comes across your account to just kind of see a little bit of everything. It, it's great when they see, you know, my dogs, me working out, you see real estate. So I'm not just a real estate agent, but I'm an actual like human that does other things outside from selling houses. Um, I have gotten leads from people that reach out to me because they saw 
a clip of me at the gym boxing and they're like, oh my gosh, it's like you box, that's crazy. I like boxing too. And now we get into this conversation that's not even related to homes, but then they end up telling me that, you know, they're thinking about buying a home and or their relative wants to buy, how do we start the process? So if you are comfortable, and again, this is gonna be up to you. I know that some people are private because maybe they have kids or they don't wanna put themselves out there. But if you're not like that, I would say, you know, showcase a little bit about who you are and what you like to do, maybe your hobbies, because people are going to be able to relate to you on a different level aside from buying or selling a home. And then that's how they're going to start to follow you. Because buyers and sellers, the moment that they are done with that real estate transaction, like they're not thinking about real estate agents anymore. But if you're posting tips or if you're posting like, hey, you know, like I'm a soccer mom and this is what I do when my kids go out or whatever it is. Or, you know, I have five dogs, like one of the agents in our team, she has eight dogs and she loves to adopt um, and foster dogs. So she showcases that a lot in her Instagram. So she gets a lot of that community. So whatever interests you, um, whatever your hobbies are, look at that as an opportunity to, you know, post more about that so that you can start attract those individuals, because then that's how you're going to be able to penetrate to that community. And that's maybe how they're going to be able to see you as a real estate expert. What else? Any other questions? No other questions at the moment. I think I just want to make sure, can you, if, if you didn't see or get the guide, put it in the chat so we can make sure that we can send it. It's in the link to it is in the chat as well. So a lot of this stuff that Lloyd is talking about, the equipment, um, the apps that she uses to edit, it's all in that guide there. Um, and all the ideas of what kind of content to put out as well. Great info. So if somebody was just getting started on YouTube, what would be, let's say your top three things that you would recommend, Loida? I would say create a list of like the most frequently asked questions that you might get from buyers or sellers, because that can be your starting point. So for example, uh, one of the things that I have done also to automate, you know, a process with, with any client that I'm working on is that I create these short videos based on these very frequently asked questions. So when it comes to buyers, you know, what does the process look like? You know, here's a clip. You start building a library and it's very simple questions. So create that list. And that way you're not thinking about like, well, I don't have any ideas. Buyers, sellers, there are so many blogs out there as to what's happening in the real estate market. Take that blog and just now created in video format. Those are, that's one tip. Another one is you just have to do it. I mean, we're gonna stumble, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna have to do like five takes, but it's completely normal. I was there, I was never, like I wasn't born good at doing video. I still remember when I started posting my videos on YouTube, I would talk really fast and I would run out of breath and I was always very serious. So actually another tip, make sure that you're always smiling because if you're smiling, people are going to feel like you're friendly and like they want to watch you. If you're serious or monotone, then that's kind of when they get like, uh, I don't want to watch this person. Let me tune out. So smiling is key, not just on video, in person, wherever you are, just smile. Um, my friends, they, they make fun of me. They're like, Lloyd, you always have a permanent smile because <laughs> anywhere that I go, I'm just like, I'm smiling. I want to make sure that if people don't know me, it's like, oh, that, that girl looks friendly right there. So that's another tip. And then the last tip would be to um, just stay consistent, maybe find someone to hold you accountable. Because if not, what's going to happen is that you're going to be really excited after this training and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, like Lloyd gave me all of these ideas, but you're not going to implement it. Or you're going to do one or two videos and then you're going to be like, oh, this is too hard. Like, this is too time consuming. I'm not going to do it. If you might be thinking that, I would recommend maybe um, what I have seen is, for example, on Fiverr, F-I-V-R-R.com, you can outsource the editing. You can find someone from overseas that can edit your video for like $4. So look at other resources if you have the budget for it as to who can help you so that you stay consistent. Maybe you film the videos, maybe you messed up like 10 times in the video, but someone else is gonna edit it. So now you don't have to worry about spending an hour or two trying to learn how to edit these videos. You pay someone 
and now they do it and now you stay consistent. Pick a day during the week. Maybe it's a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever day that is for you where you film three or four videos. Let's say you want to post a video every single week. Now, let's say you put, you recorded four videos on a Sunday. You send it to that person overseas to edit them for like 20 bucks. Now you have a video for every single week. And now you don't have to worry about it because it only took you one day out of that month to film four videos. So those would be the, the top three things that I would say. Do you have a special name for your YouTube channel? No, if you just type in my name, Loida Velasquez, that, that's it. I know that some people get creative with it. When I started my YouTube channel, I just left it like that. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, Gretchen said she uses InShot. She loves it. Tina wanted to know, um, you have all the editing apps. What's the number one you use for YouTube? The number one that I use for YouTube is uh, Final Cut Pro. That's the one that I use. Now, Final Cut Pro is the upgraded version of iMovie. So this is a program that you would have to pay for. I think I got it years ago during a Black Friday sale, but it was like, I want to say like $250. So it's not like a cheap um, program. And the reason that I got it was because I wanted like the fancy transitions and be able to put things here and move things around. So that's what I, that's why I got it. Do you need it? You don't need it. I did all of my editing just with iMovie for two years. And actually with even InShot, even though it's a mobile app, but you can probably do the same thing. But for YouTube, Final Cut Pro is what I currently use and what I have been using for the past like years. Okay. I think, I think we're starting to close down now and we just wanna make sure everybody knows that Loida has a great boot camp coming up. That's April 14th. So uh, this whole thing will also be on our new YouTube channel. We just created one for the Rice team. So we'll send that out to everyone. Um, and uh, you also, besides your boot camp, also have a uh, podcast. So everybody should sign up for her podcast. It's easy to do while you guys are all driving around. I know I've done it and I've seen her YouTube. She's awesome. So super excited. We're super excited to have you. Um, if anyone needs to get hold of you who doesn't already know you, we'll also send out their information. But I think it'd be hard not to find you <laughs> on your Instagram, your YouTube, or um, on the podcast. So the I'm podcast is new in real estate and her website, LloydaVelasquez.com. So we'll put that all in there. It's in the guide as well, too. Love it. And then next month, Chelsea, what do we have going to? So our next mastermind we have on April 12th at 11 a.m. Um, is another real estate agent based out of Toronto. His name's Tom Story. He's going to be talking about the importance of buyer education in high price, low inventory markets, and the best way to educate your buyers so that they'll actually close deals and we can get them into homes. So that'll be our topic for April. And we're doing a coffee talk too once a month, especially we really want to help educate the clients in this next bit. We're taking a lot of time, as most of you know, we deal with these tough clients and right now we're really guaranteeing these loans. So once you get all this work done, because you guys work really hard to get these Instagram, YouTubes, all that. If you have, a, if you don't have a lender you trust, we hope we're that with that that group. We'd really love to help you. We specialize in California, Nevada. We're very good with tough loans. We'd like some easy loans too. So if you have any questions on a borrower, we would love to help you. So. Once again, Lloyd, I don't know if you have any parting words for us, but thank you from the Rice team so much for being here. No, thank you for having me. I'm always excited when, um, you know, anyone reaches out to do a training, just because I remember, you know, being in that position where you're trying to find out information, you reach out to other agents, and it seems like no one really wants to give you the right info. So, I hope that everyone that tuned in here was able to get a lot of great tips that you can start implementing immediately. My YouTube channel has, like I mentioned earlier, over 200 videos on there with more stuff. So it's not an excuse that there's no information out there. So if you can't find it, just look a little harder. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for coming too, obviously. <laughs> Thank you very much.